So hi, we are finally in the third lecture of uh, week 8. This lecture is actually going to discuss uh, two concepts that are not directly in related with, uh, with basic programming, but uh, they are going to be used very heavily when you start writing code, right? I mean, especially when you are going to write uh, more complicated code and uh, the concepts that are that are that we are going to discuss today uh, they fall into the category of data structures okay so we are going to have a look at two common data structures today stacks and queues um, so we'll just uh, start this with uh, an example and this example is motivated from the discussions that we've had in the class in the in the previous week um, especially related to the functioning of, uh, of how these user defined functions are called from one uh, place to another right so that's that was that was kind of the motivation behind this uh, example so assume that uh, we are just trying to execute a simple c program i have i have a main function and then i have three more uh, user defined functions f1 f2 and f3 um, we all know that uh, execution starts from the first statement of the of the main function so basically you know this is where it all starts um, there is a variable a local variable called v1 and it needs to be you know put somewhere in the memory so what happens is that some designated space in the main memory is allocated for it now this space you know whatever wherever this this v1 is getting allocated it is actually uh, something that is reserved for the functioning of the main function only we have discussed this uh, in brief in the last week uh, during discussions but basically the idea is that this whole memory block is just meant uh, for uh, for variables and any other stuff that is related to uh, the main function now the first statement the next statement in this uh, in this main function is a call to the f1 function and uh, at this point of time what happens is that within the main memory uh, some more space is allocated and uh, this is space you know the new space is uh, is dedicated towards uh functioning of the f1 function only okay so this is this this is space right it the this the the block for main it also remains there right it's not it's not going away but that that block is separate from this new block okay and uh, and uh, uh, the the memory addresses basically belonging to one block is not shared by uh, memory addresses belonging to the the other block so uh, and one more piece of information that uh, this this piece of block um, usually has is uh, is some kind of return information so what does return information mean um, you can see that um, this function f1 is being called at line number five for example in this program so as soon as this function finishes off the next statement that should be executed should be at line number six so you know it, it is not really saved like this you know it's a very simplified view of, uh, of what we are trying to show but uh, the idea is that there is some kind of information saved here which uh, which can help us go back to the calling function so f1 here is the called function and main is the calling function so so whenever this uh, call function finishes um, we have to go back at the at the right position in the code in the calling function so there is some information being stored here in order to uh, to do that uh, and of course i have some some local variables there is there is a local variable called v2 which is essentially a formal parameter for f1 uh, and this v22 is getting allocated in this same uh, memory block now <coughs> the first statement in f1 itself is another call okay call to a function called f2 so then what happens is something like this uh, there is another memory block that gets created and this memory block is uh, allocated for the functioning specifically for the functioning of the f2 function okay now you can see that uh, and by the way I, I still have some more information so that information that i saw in the previous example there is some something similar being stored here as well because why because essentially f2 is being called by f1 f1 is being called by main right so there is a kind of chain here that is happening so so when f2 will finish it has to go back at the appropriate position in f1 and similarly you know when f1 finishes it has to go back in, uh, in at the at the correct location in um, in main so basically this this return information that you can see is is stored every time whenever there is a new call 
in the chain right the, a new function call is made in the chain i have to store some information so that i can go back easily uh, anyhow so the main and uh, f1 blocks but whichever were created uh, prior, prior to this call they are still intact they are not being being removed from the memory but uh, again you know they are separate from this this new block okay um, and finally there is just one uh, you know, relevant statement in this in this function f2 it gets executed and then you know there is really nothing and by the way uh, writing these return statements are not really necessary right i mean if i even if i did not write this uh, it would have returned automatically but i just wrote it so that uh, i can discuss it explicitly that like you know whenever uh, the control reaches here uh, what i'm trying to say is that now this function is returning this function's job is done it's over okay so that is what i'm saying that now as soon as the return statement is hit uh, this memory block okay, whenever this statement gets executed this memory block for f2 that was created in order to facilitate the execution of f2 that now gets freed okay freed as in this memory is deallocated okay and uh, the return information that we stored here right it can be used to go back to the correct position in the code so in this case uh, i'll simply go back to f1 and uh, now uh, the next statement is a call to f3 another function okay so then what happens is now another block gets added uh, to the you know another block gets allocated in the memory and uh, this one is specifically dedicated for the functioning of uh, the function f3 uh, you know the formal parameter v3 it finds some space in this this particular block and of course we also have to store that return address so that we can go back to f1 at the correct position and uh, and again right the blocks for f1 and main they are basically unchanged whatever was their state before this call they remain exactly the same now again there's just one printf statement there so that printf statement executes and then we can go back to f3 using the same return uh, return information that we had um, so let's you know so finally we, we go back to this place and again now um, even f2 has uh, you know uh, uh, so this is f1 you know so f1 has uh, has completed execution too so now what we have to do is uh, uh, you know this this memory that was that was given for execution of f1 that too can now be freed so what happens is with the help of this again this return information i'm going to go back to the calling function which is main and uh, finally right so this chain has has finished off everything in the main has been completed so now at this point of time uh, the execution of the program ends and whatever memory was allocated to this particular process is freed in totality so now what one thing that you can see is that uh, this this memory blocks right that we had we have just seen they had some kind of a pattern right so for example they followed a last in first out pattern this means that uh, the block for the function which was ca called most recently in the in the calling chain uh, it is freed first it, it is allocated at the end and it is freed first so this type of memory organization this type of an organization of data is also known as stack okay this is this is the the term that we've been using till now without actually defining what a stack is so this is exactly what a stack is so stack is essentially a data structure and a data structure is just a way to organize data so that it becomes useful for some uh, some particular purpose um, in a stack the data is stored in such a way that uh, whatever goes in in the last uh, iteration it comes out in the in the next iteration right so basically um, whatever goes last it comes out first uh, so one way to implement such a kind of stack let us say you want to emulate a stack you can do that by restricting the insertions and deletions over a typical array right we have done this insertion deletion things if you remember um, at that time we were we were seeking the indices where you wanted to um, to insert something or delete something now the restriction here is that uh, these insertions and deletions if you restrict them to a single index right and that is that index is basically the the higher end of the array um, if you restrict them there then in some ways you can actually emulate the working of a stack and uh, that particular index wherever you are doing the insertions or the deletions 
you know the higher end of that array wherever these things are happening um, the terminology for that index is called as top okay so, they, so I essentially say that uh, this index is the top of the stack currently um, the operations that are defined over a stack are called push and pop so push is essentially the equivalent of uh, adding an element it's, a, it's the equivalent of insertion at the highest possible index at that particular time and uh, it takes just one element as argument because now the insertion index is implicit um, similarly the deletion operation that was there in array the uh, the counterpart for a stack is known as pop right so push and pop and whatever you pop out of a stack that thing is returned back as a as a as a result so this is a very simple example of how a stack looks like assume that uh, i have a single element in the stack right now so and this is top okay so the top is pointing here essentially at index zero um, all these elements are basically don't care so if you remember what these don't care means i'm simply saying that whatever elements are there i simply don't recognize them i simply don't uh, uh, i don't really know what is there and i don't want to know what is there so so these are don't care so essentially my array only has my stack only has one element um, so now if we push an element uh, so this is the, the terminology right for insertion if i'm pushing an element let's say 21 to this uh, this uh, stack uh, the top now gets incremented to one so the top is pointing here and i have these two elements 12 and 21 if i get another push request let us say for 39 um, it gets added here at again the the higher end of the array the top gets incremented to two um, then let us say if i get a request to pop an element out of the stack i simply remove this one right the topmost element the, the element that was at top that gets removed um, so now top goes back to one right so the top is now pointing here and uh, if another pop operation is executed then uh, then i'm going to lose this particular element from the array right and uh, the top now goes back to index zero and if i do another push then again it, it moves like this right so the, the element gets added here at index one and uh, the top is increased to 0.21 so this is just a simple example of how a stack looks like using an array um, a counterpart of stack another data structure that is often used is uh, uh, is queue okay so with stack the insertions and deletions are restricted at just one end um, with, with with queue what we do is that uh, we still restrict the insertions and deletions at ends but now we use both the ends for it right it, it, instead of just the higher end of the array i use both the ends the 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 lower end as well as the higher end and essentially now what happens is instead of having a first in a last in first out kind of a pattern a queue is essentially a first in first out data structure so what it means is uh, there are two ends right so at one end you are going to add values you are going to insert values there and this end is known as the rear end of the queue and we actually use a, a variable that points to the last inserted element and that that, that variable is called rear and uh, similarly the other end from where we do the deletions uh, that end is called the front end of the queue and uh, we use a variable there to point to that uh, the, the, the the element that is going to go out next out of this queue and we call it front okay the the operations you know the counterpart of push and pop are called nq and dq so nq means you are uh, nqing something you are adding something to the queue and dq means you are taking something out of it now you know one common place where uh, you will actually see and uh, uh, when you study operating systems you will uh, um, you'll, you'll hear this term far often but uh, basically if you have gone through that digression lecture that talked about processes so one 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 place where uh, uh, queues are often used uh, to, to store process details so that they can be scheduled in a judicious fashion and uh, this 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 is a very poorly made diagram but if you have uh, if you have seen that uh, digression lecture you'll understand that essentially i have three processes and uh, you know they are basically being given uh, the cpu in in a round robin fashion so basically if a new process comes in uh, that process goes to the end of the queue and whenever a process um, 
you know it's, it 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 simply I, i mean it's not really exactly the same because there there is there is a priority thing as well but but you know in a very simple world where all the processes require the same amount of time to execute uh, a queue can simply implement it like this where uh, what whichever process comes in next it goes at the rear end of the queue and uh, you know whenever a process executes and it is it has finished i assume that all are requiring the same amount of time then it gets out out of the front end of the queue so that's a very simple place where queues are often used um so one way to 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 implement the queue again is using an array so let's just say that uh, i start with just one element again with just uh, an element at uh, at index 0 so now both rear and front uh, they point to the same index that is 0 now let's just say i get an n queue request for element let's say 21 um now this is the idea that uh, 21 gets added here and uh, it's rear actually that gets ahead right the front still remains wherever it was okay um, but 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 rear moves forward similarly if i get one more request for uh, n queuing um it gets added at this index 2 and the rear again moves ahead it moves ahead to uh, point to index 2 front remains wherever it was so now front is here rear is here now if i get a request to dq something then basically what happens is that uh, this in this element the element 12 that is going to be deleted now this is where you can see that if it was a pop operation i would have removed 39 instead of 12 but in queue um, i i i take out elements from the other end so basically here it is 12 that is returned and uh, the front now goes ahead and it now points to index 1 if i receive another dq request again the it is the front uh in it is i'm going to remove an, another element from the front so uh now this time 21 goes out and the front moves one step ahead to join rear at this particular location at at index 2 and maybe if you if you try to nq something more um it will be added here right at index 3 and again the rear moves forward whereas the front remains at 2 so where do we use these stacks and queues um we saw at least uh, one uh, example of where stacks are used that is in implementation of these uh, chains of function calls um one more thing that uh, i did discuss briefly in the previous week was that let us say you have some kind of a recursive formulation for a problem and you want to convert it to an iterative formulation um one straight forward way is to use a use a stack right because now you understand that whatever we were doing using recursion that is nothing more than Uh, putting something in the stack and then you know when the stack starts popping out uh, you start getting values okay and and you can actually do that by creating an explicit stack uh, object an explicit stack instance and then use it to put your values in the stack and then you can pop them out in in a specific order uh, queues are used for many purposes actually in computer science um in fact any protocol that has some kind of first come first serve model um queues might actually be used in the background a very common example is in any type of message delivery uh, protocol or system where you want you would like a particular message to be delivered first uh, you know in, in in you want the messages to be delivered in the same order that uh, uh, that they come so the messages should leave the system in the same order in which they uh they came so first in first out um now one thing that uh, we did not discuss in this lecture is that uh, what happens when the rear variable in the queue it reaches towards the end of the array right now i cannot add something uh, as soon as uh, the rear let us say reaches uh, size minus 1 right so what happens then um even though uh, even if the front has has moved ahead from 0 it means that i do have some space in the array i cannot actually add more elements to it because a rear has reached the end of the array and this is why this formulation of queue is not really too practical so usually the the queues that we use in reality in in you know in in practical sense is somewhat circular in nature i'm not going to tell you what it means um, you can check out the additional reading slide and uh, if you if you wish to know more otherwise you will study all these things in the in the next semester in data structures and uh, just to, just a reminder it was just an introduction to two most common uh, 
data structures uh, there's one more common data structure called linked list and this we are going to have a look in the next week there's some homework and there's some additional reading as well we are going to discuss this in the class on wednesday thank you